Good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, this video, I'm going to target some of the new viewers on the channel and the preppers and anybody interested in emergency communications. We're going to be looking at uh, NVIS or NVIS, and it is a method of deploying HF communication in a way that will allow you to communicate without infrastructure, with obstructions in the way, within valleys, and be able to communicate up to about uh, three to 400 miles radius. So this is perfect for anybody looking for statewide communication um, all the way down to the county and city level. We're gonna jump on a quick net here to do a demo, and we're gonna talk about all the things you need to know and you need to do to get uh, started with Envis. All right, let's get right to it. All right, I have a pretty modest setup in terms of my radio equipment, uh, much more modest than the guys we're about to talk to in a bit. I'm running the Yaesu FT891. This is a 100 watt HF rig. Uh, right now we are on the uh, 80 meter band. Technically it's uh, more like 75 meters. We're on uh, 3.868 megahertz. And this is a local watering hole. I've had some good luck with contacts uh, in the state of Arizona and a little bit of California. For power, we're running a 12 amp hour lithium iron uh, phosphate battery from BioWino. And uh, actually, earlier in the week, I made my first contact on the same frequency using uh, my FT818ND, just running 5 watts. And uh, I have to tell you, the guys on that net were really surprised that I was able to make uh, the contact on 5 watts. Most of those guys were running 1,000. Hi, uh, Fred. Everybody, it was good catching up with you. Um, Gaston, uh, out there in Cave Creek, man, you're going to have to try to chime in uh, more often. We're usually here. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, I have a question for you. I'll, I'll save it for tomorrow on recommendations for a Faraday cage for the radio. This is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. Good morning. I missed the call there. Alpha Charlie 7 Alpha Hotel. Alpha Charlie 7 Alpha Hotel. All right. Alpha Charlie 7 Alpha Hotel. Uh, you're 5'9 out here in New River. Uh, New River, Arizona? Roger, Roger. Yeah, running 20 watts. Oh. You're pretty good for 20 watts. Yeah, thanks a lot. And it's a very modest uh, dipole as well. It's just a Copperhead BNC connector up about 16 feet on a painter's pole. Uh, with just some really inexpensive 26 gauge silicone uh, wire. I would say right now you're probably my fifth or sixth contact. I'm exploring uh, Envis on 80. Uh, where are you located and what's the name? Hey, good morning, Matt. Good to hear you. Hey, Matt, I wanted to get your uh, take real quick um, before you get uh, wrapped up in things. Um, I was curious when I heard you the other morning talking about a Faraday cage and, uh, you know, everything going on with solar cycles and equipment possibly dying, uh, mostly the cell infrastructure. Do you have any recommendations for a DIY Faraday cage, uh, you know, to drop uh, like a second HF rig into? Back to you. Well, guys, what do you think about that? That was pretty cool. So uh, let's do a little bit of uh, some talk on Envis and uh, why I personally like it. So number one, I started the video by saying there's no infrastructure involved with Envis. There are no intermediate repeaters. We don't have to worry about line of sight communication like we do with VHF, UHF. Uh, I could be in a valley. I could have buildings and rolling hills, and it does not matter. Now, uh, like I said, you do need some HF equipment and you do need to have a license that allows you to operate on HF. 
that would be in the US, your general class privileges, which I highly recommend everybody get into. Uh, the antennas are very simple to make. It's typically just a wire dipole. And what makes it an Envis antenna is uh, also the height above ground. So typically you wanna have your antennas at a half wavelength. So at 80 meters, that's gonna be 40 meters of height. Um, but I'm not concerned with what they call low angle or low takeoff angles, because I don't want to do DX or distance communication and make a random contact in France or Germany um, or the Pacific. I'm more concerned about targeted local communication. And to do that, you bring down your antenna, you bring it down to, uh, down to as low as about 1 20th uh, of the wavelength. Um, I've even done it down to 1 10th and it's worked fine. I found 1 20th actually to be a pretty good sweet spot. So my 80 meter dipole outside is only at 16 uh, feet right now, which is actually pretty easy to get up in the air with a painter's pole. Um, and it works between uh, 2 megahertz and 8 megahertz uh, during the morning and the evenings. Uh, the 80 meter band uh, works great. That's what we are on right now. We are on 3.868 megahertz and uh, I was able to make contacts in Prescott, Arizona, Phoenix. The other day I was out in Tonopah and I was even able to touch portions of California. So it's great for that uh, zero to 400 mile radius. And that is targeted communication, um, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And VHF, UHF really um, can't do that unless we're within basically line of sight or have infrastructure in the form of repeaters. Um, the military has also been using Envis uh, going all the way back to, I believe, maybe the First World War. Um, and it's also great for military applications in urban areas where they don't have repeater infrastructure in place. Um, and again, it works through any of those obstructions. And the other cool thing about Envis is that since it takes off at high takeoff angles, given the height of the antenna, it comes straight down and showers an entire area, like the state level for the most part. And it's very difficult to do fox hunting or what they call radio finding uh, because the signal looks like it's coming from everywhere. So if you're into OPSEC, that's another advantage over VHF, UHF. Um, it's not terribly easy to figure out where the transmitter is located. Um, my setup is pretty uh, straightforward. I've done a video on the, in the, it in the past. Uh, really, I'm just running a, a long arm uh, painter's pole. Mine has three eight foot sections. I'm just running two at 16 feet. I'm using a small uh, BNC binding post. It's like three bucks, I'll link to that below. And just 26 gauge of silicone wire, 66 feet on each end. And then I've trimmed it a bit specifically for uh, this frequency. So I'm on uh, 3.9 megahertz is the center frequency um, for what I'm allowed to access on general. So I can work down to 3.8 megahertz all the way to four uh, megahertz, which is roughly the, the 75 meter band. So the investment is very low. You can have this full setup for less than a thousand dollars. You can get yourself a 500 to 600 dollar HF rig, uh, a painter's pole for 40 bucks, a little bit of wire, um, and then I would get an antenna analyzer to help you cut it. Again, refer to my other video because I talk about all this, but the point of this video is if you're interested in uh, regional communication, uh, county level communication, city level communication, uh, statewide without any infrastructure, this is really the, the, the ticket here. And the last thing I'll say, it's also dependent on time of day, time of year uh, for the most part. So we were on 80 meters, which is uh, a great band that has Envis properties typically in the evening to early morning. Uh, that's why this net takes place at 0600 uh, daily. I haven't really tested it past about 7.30 a.m. And then during the day, 40 meters is um, a great place to also experiment with Envis. And that's where most of my work has been done uh, prior to this. And what that last video was mo mostly on was on 40 meters. Um, so if you're looking for, like I said, a great way to have local comms without infrastructure, do your research, take a look at Envis. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick tour, quick demo. Um, and really that's all I wanted to share with you guys. So I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Hey, good morning guys. Apologies about the, uh, the lighting. It's uh, 0700 and have to get ready for work, but I want to show you some of the hardware. So uh, first and foremost, this is the Mr. Longarm painter's pole, but I have it mounted using these RF Max uh, antenna mounts. 
and it works pretty well. It's going up about 16 feet with just two of the sections. And I just want to show you, this is the original one and it's supporting my two meter uh, 440 Yegi. So it can handle uh, some decent weight, which is really nice. I purchased a second one uh, to put on the other side of my property for the uh, dipole that I was using on the net today. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at its setup. It's nearly identical and uh, really quite straightforward if I don't fall over all these rocks. So we have the same setup here. Just have one of the RF Max mounts. I need to mount the second one. A little bit of feed line going into uh, the RV there. And then we're going up uh, 16 feet. Again, it can go up to about 23 and a half feet. I uh, haven't tried that yet. And that's the BNC binding post. And we've got the 26 gauge silicon wire. And what I love about this setup is that it's very inexpensive, very modest. And uh, if I can do it, anybody else can do it. And the wire is going through the, uh, the Palo Verde here. And I have it connected to a little bit of plastic insulation I cut from a cascade uh, lid. And it quite literally is clipped onto this Palo Verde branch with an S-clip carabiner. So cheap effort or cheap uh, HF rig, a little bit of wire, a BNC binding post, and a little bit of feed line. Uh, the feed line I am switching over to RG316, uh, waiting for two 25-foot uh, uh, lengths to come in. All right, it's, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I'll figure it out. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Mm. And feel free to subscribe. Um, I really appreciate you guys that are supporting the channel, uh, whether it's just you know viewing the content, commenting, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, a lot more of this, um, this content will be coming. Uh, I've got about a backlog of 20 videos. If there's anything you guys want to see, let me know. All right, got to get to work, guys. Take care. Bye.